First, there's smoke. Then there's a quake. Suddenly, ash and lava erupt into the sky, causing massive damage. And the ash hangs in the air for days. By now, you must have figured out what I'm talking about. It's none other than the deadly volcanoes. Over the years, volcanic eruptions have significantly impacted human history. For example, in 79 AD, the beautiful city of Pompeii in Italy was utterly destroyed by one of the most catastrophic eruptions in European history. Mount Vesuvius erupted with extreme force, throwing substance over 30 kilometers high, and the ash stayed in the air for days. Eruptions like these have killed hundreds of thousands of people. But how and where do they form? Why and when do they erupt? Finally, do they have a positive ecological significance despite being the monsters that they are? By definition, volcanoes are ruptures in a planet's crust that act as a kind of tunnel that allow the magma and ashes below the surface to escape into the atmosphere. These ruptures usually appear in the collision areas of plate tectonics. However, there are diverse ways in which these ruptures can occur. We typically associate a volcano with a mountain having a crater on top. But in reality, the fissure vents are flat, linear areas that can go on for kilometers. The largest one, Cutena, is in Bolivia, and it's almost six kilometers long. Yes, six kilometers. Now coming to volcanic eruptions, not all of them erupt in the same manner. For instance, shield volcanoes don't erupt dramatically, but lava flows out of them in a constant and slow stream. You can find a lot of these in Hawaii and Iceland. In some volcanoes, the passages can be closed, and similarly, some volcanoes are no longer active tunnels. A volcano is termed active if it erupted within the last 10,000 years and still has some activity, while dormant volcanoes are those that haven't erupted within 10,000 years. But yes, they might erupt in the future. And then there are extinct volcanoes that aren't active and probably won't be active in the future. The conditions below Earth's surface are so extreme that even solid rocks melt, creating a dense fluid called magma. When a volcano erupts, the magma reaches the surface. There, it becomes lava and eventually solidifies. Lava can reach temperatures as high as 1250 degrees Celsius. And along with all this, tons of ashes are thrown in the air. At present, there are 1500 active volcanoes around the globe and most of them are concentrated in an area called the Ring of Fire. The Ring of Fire lies in the South Pacific, forming a 40,200 kilometer long chain of tectonic activity. Precisely speaking, six plate tectonics interact with each other in this region. Scientists concluded that 22 of the 25 most significant eruptions within the last 11,700 years occurred within the ring. Japan is part of the Ring of Fire and almost 10% of the world's active volcanoes lie in Japan. The largest volcano on Earth, Moana Loa in Hawaii, is 4.1 kilometers high. It goes down over 5 kilometers under the surface of the Earth. This means that if we pulled its entirety to the surface, it would be taller than Mount Everest. Even though Pompeii is a famous example of a major volcanic eruption, the largest recorded event happened centuries later. In 1815, Tubera erupted with more than 50 cubic meters of magma and collapsed dramatically into a 6 kilometers wide and 1250 deep caldera. The eruption killed 71,000 people and caused a fatal change in the Earth's weather for a year. The ash also caused a temporary global cooling, known as the Year Without Summer, and destroyed a small culture of Papuan, now remembered as Tambora culture. Volcanic eruptions are so catastrophic that they destroy large areas, whipping off any form of life. But would you be surprised to know that volcanic eruptions play an essential role in the planet's ecology? How? Well, after destroying an ecosystem, lava eventually cools down, creating a perfectly habitable area. After the dust settles, it enriches the soil and other ecosystems with microelements. Volcanic soil is incredibly rich and fertile, and soon life begins to reappear. First, there appear bacteria, fungi, and other microorganisms. Then other pioneers like mosses and simple plants visit. 
Afterward, animals come, and sometimes later, the volcanic desert is replaced with a thriving ecosystem. In this way, volcanic eruptions create new ecological niches, and thus are one of the motors of evolution. This means that even deathly volcanoes serve a purpose for life on Earth. Share this video with your friends and follow us for more educational content.